In today's times, it's important for leaders to focus on employees and their well-being, their productivity and their overall effectiveness. With a war for talent, it's becoming more and more important to drive cultural transformation aimed at employee well-being. Let's now explore in conversation with Rishad Premji, Chairman of Wipro, how people and culture are balancing employee and customer experience across industries. Richard, it's such a pleasure talking to you once again. And uh, as you can see, slowly we are starting to move out of having to talk uh, you know, only across computer screens. Um, how have these months been and what are some of the major learnings that you've got, especially when it comes to employee welfare? You know, Vikram, it's good to talk to you again. And, you know, the world has changed so dramatically in these last 18 months. And, you know, it's an obvious statement, but it's still quite profound and deep as to how much the world has changed. And, uh, you know, from moving people physically home to ensuring that they were safe, to ensuring that they were connected, to ensuring that they were productive, has been a real, real uh, uh, learning, uh, Vikram, for us. And for me, the biggest and probably the most important learning is you've got to be very clear what you're prioritizing and what's most important. And we were very clear back then that the most important thing, number one, was the safety of our employees, that they were sort of careful, that they were taken care of, that that was the number one thing that we were prioritizing. And so we were very clear and very clear with our customers that we needed their support to ensure that our uh, employees were more safe, right? And then moving from there to, to a world where they could actually be uh, connected and and productive and feel a sense of belonging and it's been a big journey of learning and my personal learning for me has been that the most important thing is strong employee engagement and connectedness nothing replaces good old connecting with people you know I remember talking to a customer who said this to me once he said you know in these in these COVID times I spend every two or three weeks reaching out to each of my team members and I spend five minutes with each of them and I have a 15 direct reports so I'm spending 75 minutes every two or three weeks and all I'm reaching out to them and saying look I have no agenda I'm just calling to say hi I'm just calling to see how you're doing I'm just going to see if I can be helpful in any way if the organization can be helpful in any way and that's remarkable how much connectedness that drove and so we spent a lot of time just trying to be connected to people making sure that they were okay truly caring for their well-being and I think that's become an inherent integral part of uh, what people expect from the people they work with, from the organizations that they work with. So big, big changes. So, you know, clearly employees are the, are, are the pillar in just about any, uh, 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 the pillar in just about any organization that you care to mention. Now, the major structural changes, the sort of feedback you've got, there'll be obviously the temporary things that happened, the stress that was happening while the pandemic was on, you know, healthcare and the rest of it. What to your mind are the structural transformations that we've experienced in the last 18 months that you think are going to be part of what is normal going forward? You know, it's, so, I mean, this hybrid model of work is an interesting debate, uh, uh, Vikram, and I think that it is here to say, especially in industries like ours, where we can work remotely and, and, and sort of from a distance, right? And there's this major paradox that I know Satya talks a lot about as well, which is, which is unfolding in terms of this hybrid way of working, right? Because you have a whole bunch of people who at one level enjoy the flexibility and want to extend and participate in that flexibility and yet you have those same people who want to be connected to people like never before because they miss the level of connectedness right and so I, I think that some some sort of hybrid model is here to stay and we are going to experiment with it as a company and I think many companies across different industries are experimenting with it right uh, but I think fundamentally it is important that people do come back and all of our people come back some of the time so that's the fundamental premise that we're working with. All of our people come back some of the time. And I'm a big believer that people connect for two reasons, right? One, they collect for culture. And they connect for culture because organizations grow when people gossip about the organizations. Organizations learn about the organization when people connect over the water cooler or coffee machines to talk about what's happening, what's changing, what's not happening inside the organization. And I think it's incredibly, incredibly critical for that to happen. And it doesn't happen in this transactional medium of uh, being virtual, right? The other thing I think it's incredibly important for is for innovation uh, and for idea exchange and for idea generation, right? Because I find those things don't happen in a very linear manner. And the challenge of this medium is it's very linear, it's very contained, it's very controlled. And so you miss out on that informal chitter chatter that happens, you inf miss out on people sitting frustrated in a conference room because something has not gone well and suddenly something strikes and they can 
uh, and they can take that forward. So I'm a big believer that people should come back. We're very keen that people come back. And people come back some of the time, but all of the people come back some of the time. So certainly people coming back with their own teams. Equally, I'm very excited about what the hybrid model allows you to participate in, right? So it allows you to include many people who couldn't be included in the workforce before. It allows you to include people perhaps who are living in tier three, tier four cities and want that flexibility of living in tier three, tier four cities, right? Even today, about 35 to 40% of our people are, have gone back to their native places, to their hometowns, and are working from there and working from there productively. And many of those people want that option. Uh, there are women who want flexibility, who want to be able to work uh, you know, on a permanent basis from home, and how do you accommodate that? There are people with disabilities that you can include. And so your talent base also changes dramatically with this, uh, with this sort of new paradigm of work. And perhaps we may also need to have some flexibility to allow some portion, a smaller but some portion of our people to have more flexibility to work from, uh, from remote places and perhaps come into come into the office on a, on a less frequent basis than the regular rhythm of maybe two or three days uh, a week. So just out of curiosity, I wonder if you've done any straw poll. The, you have so many employees. Did the majority of them prefer being a, at office or did the majority of them prefer being at home? No, and that's why there's this, there's this a little bit of this paradox, uh, uh, Vikram, that's playing out because many people want the flexibility so people are telling you, hey, I look, I want the flexibility of working from home and I enjoy it. Uh, and a large chunk of people are saying that. And equally, a large chunk of people are saying, hey, look, I want to be connected. And I want to be meeting people. And I want to be face to face yeah. with people. Right? And you have to strike that right balance between how much flexibility do you give people to work from home and yet how much do you need them in the office to be connected uh, with people. Right? The other challenge for the technology industry, Vikram, at large is, you know, we have a large chunk of people who've joined us in the last... 18 months, right? We've had over 60,000 new employees join us in the last 18 months who've never walked into a Wipro office, who are probably only engaging with their manager and maybe a few other people. And so all they know of the company is they get a paycheck from the company and they engage with one or two leaders. That's their understanding of Wipro. And so it's incredibly important that we connect with these folks. And so coming back and connecting, I think, is of, of huge importance. And the quantum we'll, we'll discover, I think, in the coming months. Right, now we are, we're hearing a lot of talk about a war for talent out there, right? Because there's a lot of expansion that obviously seems to be happening in companies like yours. And there's a war of ta for talent out there. And also the need for reskilling is being spoken about all the time. I was just seeing you at the launch of Future Skills and you were, you were, you were talking about it there. Uh, how are those trends playing themselves out right now? No, Vikram, it's real. You know, if you ask me the number one, and I'm, I'll be so bold to say the number one challenge for the industry is just talent, right? The companies who win the war on talent win, win the game at some level. There is such a huge mismatch today between uh, demand and just availability of supply. So there's a lot of effort being put at multiple different levels. There's an effort being put at an organization level where we're spending an inordinate amount of time and money trying to reskill and upskill people. At an industry level, we're spending an enormous amount of time, you alluded, to the future skills platform. I think it's an incredibly, incre incredibly important thing that people recognize the need to be constantly upskilling or they'll just get left behind. And the fact that we're doing this at an industry level where we're looking to reskill two million of the four million people who today are employed by, uh, by, the, by the industry is incredibly, incredibly important, right? So I think just focusing on reskilling talent is incredibly, incredibly important. The other obsessive focus is on just retaining talent, right? And I alluded to this earlier, but I'm a big believer, Vikram, that people don't only leave for compensation, right? People don't only leave for better opportunities. People leave when they don't feel a sense of connectedness with the organization. You know, I remember distinctly when I was at business school many years ago, I had a professor who said that if you have one friend, one friend at work, the likelihood of you staying on goes up by 30%. And if that friend happens to be your boss, the likelihood of you staying on goes up by 70%. And so a sense of feeling a belonging, somebody in the company cares that I exist, somebody in the company cares that I matter, that, that I'm relevant as a human being in this system of hundreds of thousands of employees is, is hugely important. And so we're spending a lot of time also in how do we drive a strong sense of ownership for people, like everybody should feel a sense of belonging, both not only from the practice that they work for, 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 but also from HR, that somebody cares that I exist, that I matter, that, 
you know, this is my career path, this is how I'm going to grow in the organization. And so the focus is both on skilling and reskilling to enhance the base, which I think is incredibly important, and equally obsessing on retaining people, which I think is going to become critical as well. So the struggle to retain people is it becoming somewhat more complicated because we are obviously seeing a whole flood of startups coming, which is great. We're hearing of all these unicorns coming up, which is also great. So does that mean that a lot of people are saying, well, okay, I should leave, you know, more established organizations and go off and either try to start up something myself or maybe join a something which is a unicorn or a sunicorn or something like that. Uh, does that... Does that add to the pressure on, on companies like yours? And then maybe do you try and figure out ways of fostering you know, innovation and entrepreneurship within the organization? No, so Vikram, I would submit that it doesn't uniquely change the situation. You know, there was this conversation a few years back that when the startup ecosystem, which is a thriving active ecosystem, was growing, that you know, suddenly there would be mass exodus from larger, more traditional services companies. And that didn't quite play out. So I think there's just a universal shortage of talent and a universal demand for talent. And so everybody, I think, is struggling a little bit. And certainly there are opportunities that are ripe, but many IT services companies are losing people to other IT services companies. They're not necessarily losing them to, to, uh, to, uh, to young startups. And, and so I think that the problem is universal and large. And we've just got to focus on all the things you mentioned. We've got to focus certainly on ensuring that people have great opportunities to grow and learn inside the organization. We've got to focus on strong experience and engagement with employees. We've also got to focus on the fact that people get opportunities to try different things inside the company. So for example, you know, we have a program called the Horizon 2, Horizon 3 program inside the organization. These are, it's a platform where people can come up with ideas, employees can come up with ideas that can pay off for the company in a four to six quarter time frame, right? So it's not paying off typically as a part of the operating cycle or the budget cycle for the current year. And they would like to work on them and try and put a small team together inside the company and raise a, you know, raise a small budget inside the organization. And we provide you know, employees opportunities like that. So how do you have opportunities to try out new ideas? How do you have opportunities to rotate uh, you know, consistently across the organization and have a clear thought through process on your career roadmap as an individual? Right? Not as a number, but as an individual. And there's a lot of focus on that, and I think that's helping and will help even more so over time with both retaining talent and exciting talent. So you're, you're describing a period of fairly considerable and massive transformation that's taking place, right? Skilling and how do you change yourselves and how do you retain talent and how do you evolve work environments and how do you manage a hybrid work system? So uh, I'm sure that every, every company must be hub must be charting its own journey. But what would be two or three of the major lessons that you have encountered at Bipro, which you think others may, may do well to learn from? You know, and Vikram, one of the things that happened, you know, and it just so happened because I was spending a lot of time on this, and frankly, I was spending time on this before COVID, but I think it's, it's really helped, is spending time on who you are as an organization and what you stand for, right? And I've been spending a lot of my time over the last 18 months on our what I'm going to call a cultural transformation journey, but it's the journey of what we call five habits, right? And these are it's very simple things, universal things that we practice in our own life. There are ways of working, there are behaviors, and we can control our own behaviors, and that's the beauty of behaviors, because people experience our behaviors, they don't experience our values. And so we've been spending a lot of time on how do we drive a mindset and a ways of working that is driving a cohesive, collaborative, one Vipro mindset, right? And these five behaviors are around you know, being respectful, being responsive, so connecting, always communicating at all levels across the organization, good news, bad news, what's working, what's not working, uh, being a steward of the company, demonstrating stewardship, so putting Wipro first. Nobody wins if the company doesn't win. And then building deep trust, which is incredibly important in these times of, of disconnectedness at some level, right? And so I'm spending a lot of my time, Vikram, on this, I just did my 86th session this morning. I've spent over 300 hours. I've met over 23, 24,000 of our employees. And it's been remarkable because it's given a real sense of connectedness to our leaders, but also given me a real sense of what is happening and not happening in the company. So I think that's something that we've spent a lot of time on and has been incredibly powerful. We've also been through our own journey of dramatic change. We've been through a new, we had a new CEO theory join us in, 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 in uh, May, June, well, he signed up in May, he joined us in July of last year, 
came to Bangalore in, a, in an official capacity for the first time this October. And so we've been through tremendous, tremendous change as an organization. And the one big learning has been that you cannot over communicate, right? There's no such thing as over communicating, constantly connecting with people at all levels of the organization on a continuous basis is the recipe for an organization feeling a sense of strong belonging. So I would say the cultural thing that we are, we're driving and a strong sense of over communicating, I think have been really helpful for us over these last 18 months. Right, Rishad, so you've spoken about some of the cultural tenets, but what do you think are the leadership essentials that are really core? Because at the end of the day, for transformation to be really successful and constant, leadership would be required. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reality is that, you know, every business today is becoming a technology business. Every business today is becoming digital first. Uh, so every, so the reality is that our customers' environments are changing dramatically. The reality is that the technologies that enable that digital first world are changing dramatically. And so there is no alternative to having a constant uh, learning mindset and then a mindset to continuously evolve, to innovate, uh, to reskill. You know, when I look at people and when I interview and meet people at a senior level, I mean, the two things I look for most, Vikram, in people at all levels uh, of the company, one is learnability, the ability to unlearn things you've known in the past and to learn new things. And the other is teamwork, to be able to work in a diverse environment as one and not in silos, right? I think those two things are incredibly important in this world that's constantly constantly changing. At a more junior level, I think the most important thing is a mindset of being able to continuously, continuously be open to skilling and upskilling yourself, right? The, the most frightening mindset you can meet is somebody who says, look, I've learned something new and this is going to carry me forward, uh, uh, you know, indefinitely and being close to new things. Right, so one last uh, you know, qu question if I could fire to you. This whole, this whole uh, day is really essentially about trying to figure out how does one be future ready? How should organizations be future ready? How should people be future ready? If I had to ask you, what is, it, what is really required to be future ready in this environment? You know, uh, Vikram, there's no aha answer. You know, my, my view of being future ready is being able to have a mindset of openness a mindset of being able to unlearn what you've believed to be the truth for the longest time and an openness to change that completely, right? I think that's the number one thing that you need and you need at all stages of leadership and all stages of your career. And I oftentimes worry when you meet senior people who've been incredibly successful, having a more fixated mindset about how things ought to get done than how this new world works, right? To me, that's the number one thing to be future ready, to be open to changing what you've known and to try new ways of, of, of doing it, right? And then the modesty to learn, the modesty to learn. I, I will tell you, for example, you know, I have a coach inside the company who teaches me, who I talk to once a month for an hour, just about new technologies and what's happening in the world. Somebody I'm not embarrassed to ask all my basic and dumb questions. And you know, I think those kinds of things are incredibly important to keep up with the times, to have someone who's, you know, uh, you know, a new kid off the block who knows much more about the way the world is going technologically, at least in, my, in, in, in this case, and being open to learn from them, right? And being able to sort of uh, imbibe what they have to sh share with you and, uh, and take it forward. So the ability to unlearn and learn new things, I think, is going to be incredibly important. Richard Painty, those are really valuable lessons for all of us. Thank you so much for joining us at Microsoft Future Radio. Thanks so much, Vikram, for having me.